Good evening. Tonight's show is about a traumatic chapter in our history that just doesn't seem to ever go away. My guests are Marina Oswald Porter, the widow of Lee Harvey Oswald, who was the assassin of President Kennedy, uh, conspiracy theories notwithstanding, and Priscilla Johnson McMillan, who is a journalist who, by bizarre coincidence, uh, once knew Oswald in Russia and one works, once worked for John F. Kennedy and has now written a kind of a dual biography entitled Lee and Marina. The Oswald story began when Lee, who was a self-proclaimed Marxist, defected to Russia and met and married Marina in 1961. Soon they moved to America. Lee began showing erratic and violent behavior as he took up various causes. And of course, here is how most of us saw him for the first time after he was arrested in Dallas in 1963. Um, Marina, it's been 14 years since the assassination. I, I guess, let me ask you this this way. What is your strongest emotion that you feel uh, when you think of Lee Harvey Oswald? Right now? At, um, like during the press conference, it was so... No, I'm sorry, that's not right. After, well, what would you say to him the, if you After could... I finished the book and I saw the picture, uh, how I was betrayed, really, what the wrong cause that how you I were was... betrayed. I felt. Mm -hmm. So, like before, maybe I was... I thought if I dream about it and I would see Lee in my dreams, I will ask question why. Right now, after reading the book, I really... I even don't have the words, what I would say. But it's so much deep, not hostility um, toward him, but so much anger that Maybe I will yeah. say, how dare you really ruin my life, my children. I see. Life and um, broke many hearts in this country. Mm -hmm. I mean, many people all yeah. over the world. And, and the I mean, book... No right, nobody have a right to do what he did. To no. And the book changed your feelings about it considerably because, as I gather, you were able to see things in sequence which you realized then were... Not only thing in sequence, realize the pattern, but also there were some startling uh, revelations you, in the book for you, you about him. You're trying to remember, try to have a good memory, so you can show to children another side of the father, not the one that's from newspapers. And, but when you read the book, you really doubt even that you were, have been loved. So, even that you've been loved? Yes. So you have mixed feelings, I, I, I suppose, about having done the book. Uh, would you rather have you, if you had your illusions, man. you know what I mean? Would you rather have not learned what you've learned and by going through the experience of the book? No. No. Better you have no. to face it, yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. I think Marina is a great one for facing up to experience as it is. I guess well, you she have would, to face she would it have to really love. To have survived all sorry. of this. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, and yet being vulnerable to it at the same not getting hard, not getting a shell, not being bitter. being vulnerable, just as vulnerable as possible, and yet facing up at the same time. I think. The book doesn't buy the conspiracy theory, um, but it doesn't. It also doesn't refute the conspiracy theory in detail. It just doesn't take that line. Um, the last poll, I think, was seventy-three percent of the population still believed in the conspiracy theory. Do you think it will ever go away? You are not uh, the conspiracy to... theory. Yes. Does it still occur so. to you that it's it, it might have been? It's not because the conspiracy really exists. It's just the people who want to believe that way. Maybe somebody. Uh, no matter how honest you are and how um, hard you try to prove the truth, some people just close their mind and believe it their own way. Yes, there are people who cling to it. And in fact, would have you be part of the conspiracy theory? Yes. Because, and that's rather, I must say, a delicious idea, at least in a uh, fictional idea, that you, in fact, it's just a little too contrived that you happen to know Oswald in Russia, yeah. that you then wrote a book uh, absolving all of those people who are suspected right. in conspiracies, right. that you happen to work for the State Department, and that you well, I I happen to notice the initial CIA tattooed on your back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I translated for the State Department for a month in 1956, uh -huh. but three years before I became a journalist, mm -hmm. and um, I would never have done such a thing, wore two, wear two hats at once, but sometimes Marina and I discuss what yeah. are we doing with all this wonderful well, money we're getting from the CIA and the KGB. We, last night we That's were joke, talking over the phone. Oh yeah, what will you do with that? Free. And why were you so cheap about this today? Of course, no one can ever prove that he or she isn't connected with the CIA, can he? Because no. to deny it mean? would be the first clue. I what did you for, mean? 
Sorry? What do you mean by that? Nobody can prove that I don't work with No, no one can ever utterly prove he isn't connected to the CIA. No, it's a her or she. If they were effective at it, they would be completely secret. Well, you get um, all your uh, government dossiers, you can get all of those, and I got all of mine, and it, you know, I ha didn't have any security clearance. <laughs> In other words, I was kind of on the trouble, it was on the trouble side as far as the U.S. government, if anything. So, yes, which of makes course, it, that's how they would make you look if you were with the CIA. If, I, I, anyway, if they I, did a good enough job on, on us. I don't buy the idea, but maybe you're convincing me. Um, <laughs> seriously. Um, you, you, for example, Marina, may I call you Marina? We've yes, met before. Can you be sure that your husband didn't know Jack Ruby? Yes. How? Um, okay, uh, later on I found out that Jack Ruby was owner of a uh, bar. I assume everyone the remembers that Jack Ruby is the man who that's shot only, him. That's only... <laughs> oh, I see. Um, I'm just clearing. Well, uh, he, didn't, he didn't drink. So he would not be... No, the claims were that he attended his bar. These were people seeing him. Yeah, well, you can go to a bar for more reasons than drinking, of course. Or seeing showgirls. Yeah. Or anyway, um, the timing is bad because he was home all the time. I don't well, know, we just... Well, nobody's I'm sorry, you have to buy my intuition by that. I really don't have the proof. Yeah, true, sure, because as you know, the woman is always the last to know. You know, but, like um, if somebody tell you, how can you be sure that your husband went to work just because he said he went to? True. Because I wasn't following him, so I really do not know. Mm -hmm. But, but you still intuition, know that he went to work. you feel he didn't know, Ruby, but of course you can never yeah. really know. Yeah. I cannot argue uh, somebody's opinion that he might mm -hmm. knew Jack Ruby, but I do not believe it. When, when I say November 22nd, 1963, do you have clear memories of that day? How did you find out that November 22nd? JFK, 22nd, I mean 63, uh, how did you learn that JFK had been shot? I learned uh, from my neighbor, that, no, I'm sorry, not neighbor, a friend of mine that I was living with at the time. Uh, she wasn't, um, she told me the night before that um, the president coming to Dallas. And I was very eager in the morning to, you know, watch television. Mm -hmm. And it was very nice to see thousands of people cheering and greeting the president. And of course, it was a very good mood, you know, and around. But she wasn't home. But then when she came back, I was asking her to interpret it, whatever he was saying and how it was. And then um, it was a commotion on television. And she said, oh, my God, the president had been shot. You weren't watching the screen at the time. I was watching the you screen. You were watching the screen. Maybe time. my back was thrown, you know, just for yeah. a moment or whatever. But later on, she said the shots came from school book depository. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, uh, my heart ached just for an instant. Because you knew he was connected with that building. Yes, it crossed my mind, mind for instance, soaring outside because I don't want to show my emotions mm -hmm. to Ruth. I was very afraid that it might be Lee. But so did something resembling the words, oh my God, Lee shot him, go through your head at that moment? Yes. You know, just for instance. Mm -hmm. So I ran outside and my hands were trembling. So I just came, I mean, so I went to make sure that the rifle was still in the garage. So I opened the door and I looked, it was still, the package was there. And I said, thank God he didn't do it. The gun, a gun was in the garage, Not the gun. or just the yes, package? Yes, it was a package. You assumed the, gun, the gun was in. So I thank God it wasn't, the, it was another loony. Another loony. Is that what you said? Yes, uh -huh. if that's, that's yeah. my expression. Yes, I just want to be sure I understood you on that. After his arrest, we all learned that your late husband had tried to kill General Walker, the right-wing general, which you knew. Um, how did you find that out? And when? Uh, he did not come from uh, home till late. And I was worried, and I found a note was left for me in case if something happened to me, what to do with the instructions on it. I forgot what the instructions was. You know, with the key to uh, mailbox, uh, was or something like that and he left the money and I didn't know what it was all about. So he came home very late and very scared and pale and I asked him what, what happened and he, he turned the radio on and was listening for a while and he said that I tried to shoot General Walker. Of course I was in panic and I asked him uh, how did you come up with such a crazy idea to shoot person? Why? And he said that because his, uh, if, I mean, his excuse was um, that if somebody at the right time 
dispose of Hitler, maybe the world will be spared of all this. Um, millions of innocent people have been, you know, will be killed. Yeah. So he saw himself as the so savior said, of the world by eliminating so Walker. So he said that he was a fascist and he's a man that shouldn't exist in society. So mm -hmm. I tried to argue case with him remember that if you have one idea and somebody disagrees with you, you just don't go shoot them. Mm -hmm. You debate your ideas and do the peaceful way uh, about. Yes, so you'd caution so anyway, the, um, against violence. It was not in, in the radio new, uh, news for a while. And when they announced that he was, he, he was very disappointed, he missed him. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of, if, of people who could have changed history, of course, if at that moment you had turned your husband in to the police, uh, John F. Kennedy might be alive today. Yeah, I live with, with that guilt yeah. for many years. But I if, wonder why you didn't turn him in. Were you afraid of him? Were you um, hoping that he would reform? First of all, I could not go to uh, the police because I did not speak English. So I have to have an interpreter. I did. He spoke Russian, your husband? Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know where the police was. It was mainly fear. And it was selfish reasons for me to be afraid to be alone. Mm -hmm. Not to tattle tale on your husband, you know, the second motive. People usually don't turn their husbands in, but... Um, you say you do feel some guilt about uh, that now. Yes, but I was um, very pleased that man wasn't killed. And I was mm -hmm. afraid that police will come home in, in, in any minute in, in the house. You had another chance, and though, he was in joking. a way. He said everybody think that everybody just driving away, just walked away or ran away. They never would be suspecting somebody, you know, mm -hmm. just running away, running away from scene of crime. Um, another time, and I, I did not know about this until I found out about it in the book, um, in 63, Richard Nixon enters the story. Uh, he, he, there was a headline, Nixon calls for a decision to force Reds out of Cuba. Headline. Lee Oswald read that and did what? Oh, he said that uh, he got dressed and was living, and I think he had, was putting a gun or something on him. You think he took a gun with him? <coughs> Please, excuse me. I'm oh, sorry, Nixon was in town, I believe, in Dallas, was he? I don't know. This is what I have been told by Lee, that... No. He, was to he wasn't in town, uh, and yet he still he said this anyway. He, he strapped on a gun or hit a gun and said, I'm yes, going to go have gone. a look. And he like said, yeah. I said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to have a look. Nixon's coming to town. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a fight. I told him, he's not, if he's going to leave the house, it's going to be over my dead body. So we... Yeah. Rest, oh, I could rest some, rest some. Was this, this was after the General Walker incident? Yes. Eleven days. Uh-huh. And she how long exactly. before the Kennedy assassination? Seven months. Well, you know all the statistics. Yeah. So that's the second time where you realized you hadn't cured him uh, yes. of his violent ideas and perhaps then could have turned him in. But how can you turn someone in just because he said he was going to go and take a look at Nixon and had a pistol in his um, waist? I mean... Well, I know it's easy to say that would be enough for me, but um, <laughs> I realize it isn't that easy. Anyway, he kind of give in. I think in a way he gave in. If he really could have, you know, when I locked him in the bathroom, I have to hold from inside. How long could I? I'm not that physically strong. Yes, you locked but him maybe in the bathroom. He was, yes, but yeah. maybe he really was kind of testing me somehow and see how far he can get away. diary of his that came out, I gather, was quite a shock to you because that ties in with what you said at the beginning of the show. You learned things about him that you didn't know mm -hmm. uh, from fairly lurid sexual details uh, to um, I don't know what all else. Um, I did not know what the diary was all about till it was published later on. Yeah. And it, I did not give it to anybody. Well, can you help me on this, Priscilla? What were yes. the things you learned that we learned in the diary? I get one, one that he had venereal disease at one point. Uh, well, I, I think it was no, not the that diary. Wasn't the oh, that was, that was no. elsewhere. But I think it was the um, knowledge that he had wanted to marry another girl before you, Ella. I knew he had been yes, writing the he... diary, but when he was writing, I was suspicious. What, I was thinking, what if he's a spy, you know? So it, Mm -hmm. himself. It occurred to you that he might be a spy. Yeah, uh, so what I, I was thinking of was, was a reference to another woman mm -hmm. uh, whom he married you in order to spite. Mm -hmm. I wish I knew that before. And you're not learning that now? No, 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 no. Uh, yeah. I learned after all this happened. After Had you known that was before, yes. but, you might have turned him in or something. Oh, yes, but you know something? Yeah. I met Marina first the week before the diary was published. Mm -hmm. Somehow it got from the Dallas police into the hands of the Dallas Morning News and appeared in glorious technicolor in the papers, you see. And Marina read it. Dallas police probably left it. No, I did not somewhere. read it. Somebody okay. called me and said, how dare you publish such a private thing? They blamed her for selling uh, it. And I said, I didn't... Uh, 
What are you talking about? He said, smeared all over the newspaper. Mm -hmm. And I said, I, I didn't have it in my hands to give it to anybody. But the point so, was that when I met Marina, it was the week before any of that, and she talked about Lee one way. And when I came back two months later, and she had read about Ella, and him yes. having spite, married her impartially to spite Ella, mm -hmm. Marina was different about Lee, and it took at least two months before you would open up and speak about him very much at all. At least That's that hard. long. Oh, and you never is... spoke the same about Lee again as before the diary. Yes changed the image completely. Um, was he insane at the time he killed Kennedy in any um, clinical sense of the word, or what would you say? You know, I'd like to answer, because I don't think of people that way too much. Mm -hmm. He's a person to me. I don't think Marina even likes it when um, I li when I speak of him that much, because he hurt her so badly. I, I it's surprising to me that you can speak of him. But he became, um, with great difficulty, he was the hard one to put together for the book. Mm -hmm. Marina, you see, she's all life. She's all life. But he, you had to triangulate to, to make him a person. You had to put together what he was doing without Marina's knowing it, together with what he did in the documents, the letters he wrote and everything. And he became quite a person to me. And I um, became sorry myself at his fate. And I don't, to me, he's a man, a person, a human being, just like any other human being, and not really somebody to hate or judge. We're all capable of bad things. It's awful what he did, but he, well, to me, he isn't crazy. He's just a person. If you can blame um, uh, blame him for your unhappiness, uh, whom can you blame for his unhappiness? The, uh, the mother in history? Well, I'm afraid uh, that I would blame her very, very heavily. I believe that's afraid that the phrase that Oswald's mother used to describe herself, I am a mother in history. Well, a uh, wonderful writer. Jean Stafford wrote a book called A Mother in History, history. about but her. But I think Lee wanted to make her a mother in history. I think he wanted to express his feelings of hatred for her, mm -hmm. but he also wanted to complete his victory over her by being the child who really fulfilled all her dreams and made her a mother in history. And uh, she also... Also limelight. raised him in such a way that he had no choice but to do very ambitious things. He couldn't do little everyday things. He had to defect to Russia. He had to redefect back with Marina. He had to shoot himself or slash his wrist or kill people. He couldn't do, yes. like the Morinshill said, if only he could drink and smoke or find himself a rosy-cheeked young girl, <laughs> why all this wouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. It's a good statement about George de Morinshill. Yeah. Yes. He did not smoke and he did not drink. Beware of people who don't smoke or drink. Did you see your husband shot on television? A year later, one year after all. Not the live telecast. No, I didn't. Even, uh, but you've seen I wasn't the exposed to television at the time. What emotions, if I may ask, that do you Please have do, when that's you see what that? I'm here for. Pardon me? What, what goes through your mind, or went through your mind when you first saw that? On television? Yeah. Was it immediately after the event that you first saw it, or years later? Year, year later. Or years later. One yeah. year. So you're asking what was my reaction one year later, or when I heard, when I learned that Lee was shot? Both. Okay. You don't, you don't think of your husband as an assassin? Mm-hmm. Uh, not at the beginning, one, two, three days, two days later, after President Kennedy was shot. Too incredible. Yes, I did not pronounce Lee guilty, you know. Yeah. Right away. And I don't know how to, how do you describe that your husband, I mean, er everything just fell down from under my mm -hmm. feet. I was just slow, I mean, not slowly, but I fast, um, I was flying off the cliff, or how you call it, I was jumping. The clip, which but your feelings about him clear. now, I gather, would make it somewhat easier for you to watch that replay than originally, although it seems somewhat monstrous. It's, it's happened um, very quickly, you know, on yeah. television. What's been the effect on your children? Um, Yours and his. I think my children were upset with the statement I made in front of the all news reporters about Lee about being your guilty. Bad feelings about him, yeah. Uh, nothing in my life. I uh, would like to have, I mean, it's impossible to dream about, but I would love for Lee to be innocent for my sake, for children's sake, especially for children's sake. Did you ever sake. think of changing their name? I have, uh, somebody suggested that, and no. You, you don't? I don't have think you ever so. Met, I did, have you ever I met Mrs. I don't think it's a proper thing. 
You have never met Mrs. Onassis, I assume, Jacqueline Onassis. No. Uh, it's interesting, the book that you were, there was a kind of psychological intertwining with you and the Kennedy family. I believe you had a picture of JFK, and you... you I don't uh, are, think I read so. that you, if that isn't true, that you sweated out. We had out. a cutout. I think it says so in the book. Yeah. And that you sort of, uh, as you know the expression, sweated out the the difficult pregnancy Mrs. Onassis had with uh, young Patrick, who, who died. Um, that kind of a feeling for them and all. Uh, can you conceive of meeting her? It could happen by chance at no, a literary not. party or something. That's would you, impossible. Would you have anything Never. to say or have any feelings? About no, I guess I said enough in my nightmares or dreams, always begging for forgiveness. Uh, but you had a specific life. dream of that, of Many times. asking forgiveness? Of yes, I think once she finally did, but I don't know in real life. I don't believe that she even speak to me more or less. But you have dreamed of, of asking her forgiveness? Yes, so I guess it's um, subconsciously it was a guilt in front of her was so deep mm -hmm. that come out not only once but many times yeah. and I'm not telling that to uh, to big you know good picture in front of America yeah. that's not that but that's the truth can you get through the rest of your life now um, reasonably well are you are you somewhat adjusted I'll try yeah. would I you could... do wish you had never met him oh yes you do if I if I knew it was ahead of me I would never come to America with all my love to American people would you like to go back to Russia now? To leave? Mm -hmm. No. I'd be afraid to. I would not survive there. I've got a little bit spoiled by American way of life. You can speak freely right here. Yes. You have conveniences at home. <laughs> well, it's only two weeks. But of course, I like my motherland. Yes. I love Russian people. I'm proud of Russian heritage. Well, I am. I think Russia has lots of good things to offer. Thank you. Uh, thank you both for being here and sharing memories that I know are difficult and painful, and I commend you on how well you're conducting yourself and doing this. And um, good luck to you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you for having me.